Hey everyone, it's Final Round, and my name is Jordan, and the NBA season grind is definitely back. We're on to day three, and we have still some teams that have not played yet. I'm still digging into some offseason um, notes and you know changes for teams, and and trying to apply all that with historical data. It's uh, it's not easy to try to just make predictions like that, but it's all we have to work with right now. Um, so I have a few picks for you guys. You will see images that come up on the screen. Those will be from a data app called Outlier. There's a link in the description that'll give you a seven day free trial for Outlier. So my first pick from the Dallas Mavericks, I like Kyrie Irving over 22 and a half points, minus 120. This came out at 25 and a half points um, and it dropped by three points i know it's definitely because clay thompson is there but the lines makers even with knowing clay thompson is going to be there for a long time dropped the line at 25 and a half which is around his average playing with the mavericks over the past couple of seasons um, he did go over against the spurs last year in two out of three games and he went over in 61 percent of games last season and that includes a rough playoff stretch that he had against some very good defenses on the Spurs end uh, the defense he's going up against they added some veteran players Chris Paul who's 39 years old and Harrison Barnes so Chris Paul 39 years old um, they're missing Devin Vassell as the, the starting shooting guard they gave up the second most points overall to guards last year and I'm not too worried about Clay Thompson and his volume that he's going to be you know shooting I think Kyrie Irving is still going to get his and I think uh, Luka Doncic is still going to get his um, what Clay Thompson does is just open up the lane more for guys like Kyrie to to take it to the rim and guys like uh, Luca to take it to the rim. So when a line drops dramatically like this, I know when you're looking at lines and you're betting on the NBA, if you're new to NBA and you're new to betting, you want to look at the big name players and all that. But a lot of times the big name players lines are just juiced a ton and um, you have to really look to see if there's value in that line. And that helps when you have historical data from the current season. Um, so Starting out this year, they've put up just some really big lines, um, and some people have reacted differently and you know taken a bunch of unders. But a lot of people who are new to betting say, you know, um, Luka Doncic, I'm going to take his over because he's Luka, and and you know that's fine. He's he is Luka. He's probably um, going to play great. Um, as Victor Wembanyama, I know I'm going off on a rant here, but Victor Wembanyama, his lines are, uh, especially his scoring line, is extremely high right now, and it's uh, it's warranted due to you know the sophomore jump that he's. Going going to have uh, but you still have to find value in the plays so it's not all about the big names even with role players and stuff like that you can find value and sometimes you find value when plays drop a lot if it's not due to like injury news or anything like that and the drop is just due to people assuming it's going to go down um, especially three points that's that's pretty big so I'll take the discount Unfortunately, with Outlier, I'm going to have to reach out to them. I can't sort to just regular season, so I went and I counted up the regular season games and did the math myself. Uh, for this 22.5 point line, um, he got 23 or more points in 70.6, so almost 71% of games last season. And like I said, having someone like Klay Thompson, I know there's going to be a lot of jokes about Klay Thompson missing shots and breaking shots and all that, but he still stretches the floor. You still have to respect him. You can't just not guard him so that is going to help Kyrie Irving out so for a guy averaging almost 26 points a game with the Mavericks I do like for him to get 23 plus in the season opener um, he played some preseason games uh, not many minutes but he shot a very high percentage he just kind of went out there was like okay I'm ready and uh, he, he's ready to go so that's Kyrie Irving of the Mavericks over 22 and a half points the second pick is going to be on the other side of things someone from the Spurs so I'm a Cleveland Cavaliers fan. I read a ton of stuff about Evan Mobley and how the uh, the new coach um, wants to build around Evan Mobley and unleash him and everything. And I was thinking, okay, I'm not going to make that pick because I don't want to come off as biased um, based off everything that I read in the offseason. And I'm filming at the halftime of the Cleveland Cavaliers game. They're up by 20 points. And Evan Mobley has already hit his points line, uh, which I was thinking about taking uh, for you guys. But I was just uh, like, okay, I'm hearing all that noise. Let's let's see it play out. And it played out. Um, so I have heard 
some noise about this guy coming off the bench for the Spurs. Um, Devin Vassell, the starting shooting guard, is out, which is going to be huge for this, for him to get some minutes. His name is Julian Champagne. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I, I looked it up and everything. I've seen his name. I've just never looked up how to pronounce it. I like him over one and a half three-pointers made at minus 125. Dallas was in the middle of the league giving up three-pointers last year. And uh, Wimby is going to be demanding a ton of attention uh, whenever he takes it to the rim. Um, the the defense is going to have to collapse guys like uh, Gafford and Lively, P.J. Washington. They're going to have to collapse uh, to try to stop Wimby from attacking the basket. Wimby actually became a good passer later on in the year last year. And someone like Champagne uh, is going to be open. He's going to get some good looks. So even with Devin Vassell playing last year, um, he went over this three-pointers made in two out of three games versus the Mavericks. Um, he just played about 20 minutes a game. Um, looking for him to play about 20 to 30 minutes in this game. Um, Keldon Johnson will also be coming off the bench. I'm not sure how long Harrison Barnes is going to be playing in that starting lineup. I doubt he's going to be getting the 30 plus minutes a game that he used to play and you know he's just going to be the starter and you're going to bring Keldon Johnson off the bench. You're going to be bring uh, Trey Jones off the bench. Um, you're going to bring um, Champagne off the bench and uh, you know just bring that extra spark. And you're probably wondering why was I talking about Evan Mobley and all that. So I read from SportsIllustrated.com the you know three keys for the Spurs or three things that we've learned about the Spurs, and it was that Julian Champagne is de demanding more playing time based off of his play in the preseason. Um, so I'm just going to read off some of these numbers. He shot uh, amazingly. He went under this line just one time. Um, he didn't play huge minutes in those preseason games, um, but. He shot one for six in 22 minutes. So that was his one under. And then he shot two for five in 17 minutes, four for six in 21 minutes, three for six in 22 minutes, and six for 13 in 21 minutes. Now, obviously, he's not going to be taking 13 three-pointers a game, but we know he's going to shoot it, and we like guys that are not shy with taking shots. That's why I took a guy like Miles McBride in the Knicks game. I know he's not gun shy, and... Uh, he made a lot more than his two threes. So I'm not sure how like Chris Paul's scoring is going to go. I'm not sure about Harrison Barnes. Uh, so for the first game, I'm looking for him to knock down two threes, minus 125. I know that was a long explanation. A lot of people just like to skip through picks. Um, but I do some pretty big write-ups here and take a lot of time uh, to write all this up and dig up this information uh, for you guys. So if you guys could, please like the video. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. If you have a, a little bit of extra time, could you just leave a comment for the algorithm? Just put the number Number three and it helps get this video out there for more people to see and also if you would like to try out something other than prize picks something with more lines better payouts dynamic payouts try out underdog fantasy sleeper parlay playing chalkboard use promo code find around 11 on any of these they'll match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars there's links in the description i'll take you straight there with the promo code and underdog is doing this pretty cool boost for 20 percent on all nba slips until october 27th uh, so um, check out underdog if you definitely uh, haven't so this third pick um, Aaron Gordon over five and a half rebounds minus 135. He went over in two out of three games versus the Thunder last year. And the Thunder give up the third most rebounds to the power four position last year. Um, when Gordon plays 28 minutes or more, um, he went over in 68% of games last year. And he was averaging around 11 rebound chances a game. Normally with the rebound chances, we, we look at about half of those. Um, so he he was getting around five or six rebounds, but with that hit rate, it's saying that, you know, he's going over um, almost 70% of the time. So I do really like this line where it's at for Aaron Gordon uh, to get some rebounds. And then this final pick, um, I was a little bit shocked about the payout plus 140. So Rudy Gobert over one and a half blocks is at plus 140. So he went over in every single game versus the Kings last year. The Kings went and added DeMar DeRozan, um, but they still do have uh, De'Aaron Fox, who likes to attack the basket a lot. They had DeMas Bonus, um, who is a... a Pretty talented center, um, and Rudy Gobert was able to go over this in all of those games that they played against them. I, I can't see DeMar DeRozan, you know, changing things that much. Um, 
But he played 35 minutes in the first game against the Lakers, uh, and he, he only ended up with one block. He was guarding Anthony Davis for a lot of the game. Anthony Davis does like um, to do kind of like a step back uh, mid-range shot a lot, so very difficult to, to get blocks on. But I went ahead and sorted Outlier to th- games where he played 30 to 36 minutes, just kind of putting it in that range to see where he was at. And he went over one and a half blocks in 74% of games last year. So for plus 140, a guy who was defense player of the year, um, plus 140 for two blocks. I love that play. Um, definitely uh, something to single bet. Um, you don't want to put massive plus money plays in like large parlays. You don't want to get killed by uh, that big plus money play. Uh, of course, it's up to you. You know, you bet how you like. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to bet. Um, someone asked about, you know, how many units for each of these plays. I know there's a lot of new uh, betters coming uh, to these NBA videos, but uh uh, when someone's telling you, hey, bet a half a unit on this one, bet a unit on this one, I know they're speaking of their confidence of that play. Uh, but for me, you know, it's your money. You bet what you feel comfortable with. I, um, if you want to learn bankroll management, just look up videos on bankroll management, and there are plenty of guys on YouTube who explain it uh, very well. So uh, definitely check those out if you're curious about bankroll management. And also, if you're new to my channel, um, I usually do recaps for two days before because I work a full-time job. I'm normally going to sleep before all the games are over. Um, so I know the results of Tuesday's games. I do not know the results of Wednesday's games while I'm filming this. Um, so uh, if you do want to discuss lines further, I have a Discord. Link is in the description. You can hop on in there. Um, I did have some people complaining that they were booted from the Discord. And um, I went and asked the mods, you know, why uh, some people were kicked. I don't, I knew usually am not the one banning people. Um, but yeah, if you go into the Discord and you just spam Diddy jokes for two hours straight and people get annoyed by you, you're probably going to get kicked out because with free Discords, you get a lot of spam you get a lot of fighting and hate and all that stuff um it, we just try to keep it clean so people can discuss sports and their bets that's what it's for not to sit there and spam stupid jokes for two hours straight that aren't even funny so if you would like to discuss lines further link is in the description it's free you don't have to pay anything um it will never turn to a vip or anything like that so as far as the recap goes i had Derek white over one and a half steals plus blocks he ended up with one steal he did not get the extra steal or block he didn't play in the fourth quarter the celtics were amazing um shooting the three ball they blew out the knicks quickly um, i know they are playing on this thursday slate um, and i didn't mention them but uh, the wizards give up the most points in the league they are pretty bad and i'm not i don't think we're going to see the same performance because it's really hard to do that again um, but it could still be a blowout uh, so i was looking for first quarter props for the celtics and you could almost go with any of them for first first quarter points um just the way they were shooting um tatum's might have been a little high but i did like guys like uh drew holiday first quarter points um al horford was at 2.5 um and he plays about around nine minutes um jalen brown i was going to put him in this video because he normally it gets off to a hot start i know he went under in that game against the knicks he only played five minutes he normally comes out and then comes back in near the end i think the coach just let them run because they were just so hot um, that they, he put him back in the second quarter. Um, so that worries me a little bit that he only played five minutes. I don't Maybe that's a new thing uh, in the rotation, so I'm going to just stay away from that. But it's at 5.5, and he crushed that last year. If he gets his regular minutes like last year, you know, like eight to nine in that first quarter, he's definitely going to crush that 5.5 line. Uh, so I missed the Derek White play. Uh, Miles McBride over one point five three-pointers made um he went over that in the first half uh he was one of the best scorers for the knicks um early on uh, he just could not miss he played great um nas reed over 1.5 three-pointers made um 
he banked one in at the beginning of the game. Um, you know, it still counts. And then he knocked one down in the four, fourth quarter. And then I had Anthony Davis over one and a half blocks. When I went to bed at halftime, he had zero. I was a little bit worried, but I woke up. He ended up with three of them. Uh, so good job, Anthony Davis. So um, three right, one wrong uh, to start off the season. So we'll see how uh, these other ones go. And I will let you know. Um, in the next video for Friday. So um, if you choose to tell any of these, good luck to you and God bless you. Um, I hope you have a great day. Um, it's fun around. My name is Jordan. I will catch you on the next one. Bye.